let's get into depotting the Jackie Aina and the Carly Bible. I'm going to show you everything about how I do it. There are a couple of different methods that work uh, very well. The first and probably the best is to use a Z potting machine, Z potter. So if you are familiar with the brand Z palette, they make a D potting machine. It's amazing. It's $87 or maybe it's $89. I don't have enough to depot in my opinion to warrant getting a Z potter because I would need to justify that. I think I would need to personally add 80 seven dollars eighty nine dollars ninety dollars whatever we would want to call it to the palettes that i would be doing so let's say i'm going to do nine that makes nine palettes ten dollars more expensive plus then the, the packaging to depot them and put them into plus 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 and it just really goes crazy it adds up and the next thing you know you're spending a ton of money so i have very very successfully depotted Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes in the past with my own method and so I don't see any reason not to continue. So the method I have, two things work. You need heat. I will use oftentimes my flat iron. I have a Conair and it's a wider plate. So definitely a wider plate works better than a narrow plate. So that's one method. You can just use a little bit of electrical tape. Tape your um, flat iron flat so that when you turn it on, it doesn't like kind of flip over on you. Put a piece of parchment paper on top of that. Then you take the outer packaging. So this is like, essentially it's a tray glued to a card, right? So take the card off and then you're gonna stick this tray on top of your um, flat iron with parchment paper between. The parchment paper is gonna protect your flat iron and it also really helps with other like burn type issues. I keep mine at like 350 to 375 and I do it for three to five minutes and it works great. Today though, I'm going to try a new method that I've been really successful with with other brands and it is actually my little heater. So this is attached to the wall, so I can't pull it very far, but this is just a little tiny ceramic heater but I love this little heater because it's like a great little eyelash curler if my feet are cold when I'm doing my makeup I can put it on my feet and it's just a handy little thing and I decided a few weeks ago to try using it for deep potting and it works like a champ so that is an, one of the tools that I'm going to use the next tool that I'm going to use is actually Parian Spirit so this is available on Amazon um, this is available at a few other great re retailers. I pick mine up from um, Be Beautylish. Anyway, this is my favorite brush cleaner for in between. And it also is great because it really kills adhesive quickly. So that's what I use for this. And then to get everything out of the palette, you're going to want the smallest, thinnest tools you can possibly find. So I'm going to show you what some of those are. A, um, I believe it's called a flocking tool. So it will dull over time with use. So one with replaceable tips would be excellent or just know that it is going to do that. The next thing, and I can link all of this below, but the next thing I love is a very thin depotting tool. Now this one's a little bit bent. I have a replacement actually on the way. This depotting tool is crazy thin and one side has a bend on it. Crazy thin. Love this depotting tool. By far one of the best depotting tools I have ever found. I love the weight of it and how it fits in your hand. So much better than these that kind of come with the tray. If you're ever on Amazon and you see like a palette tray that comes with a palette knife, they're made for mixing foundations and mixing colors. They're not made for depotting. They are not thin enough. And I'm just going to give you a little show here. Let's put them side by side so you can see that thinness is that's going to save you or it's going to kill you. So I do have the thicker one. And what I do with this one is I have a magnet that I've super glued onto the end. I got this magnet out of a palette. My like my three priorities like make it smaller. Reuse what you can, recycle if you possibly can. And then, and recycling to me also includes even like when you declutter and you give things away, to me that's recycling. It's getting another life, even if it's going to 
a kid's art department. So then the next thing that I like is a very, very thin and bendy. You can see this is very bendy, but it's not going to lose shape. This is a palette knife for art, like a painting palette knife. So you'll see bendable tools online and they can be very expensive. Or you can buy a set of these for like, I don't know, maybe $12. I gave the larger sizes to my artist daughter and I kept the smaller sizes. So I have kept these three. This is Seven Elements, they're available on Amazon. They have a wooden handle. All of them are bendy, even this little one, and can really get into those tight spaces. These are even thinner than my super thin palette knife, just so you know. And you can even put Perry and Spirit on these and slide them in to kind of loosen that glue a little bit further. So I like to use that. And then the next thing I like to use is a, this is very, very fancy, but it is a Sharpie. It's an ultra fine point Sharpie. I use that for writing the names of the shades on the back. You can also use a telescoping magnet to help you as you're pulling things out to kind of grab it. But I will tell you that the palette knife with the magnet attached is a little bit more effective, just so you know. But this is another little tool that you can use. And then I also use a dry erase marker. So if you're using a permanent marker and you write on the back and then you get the name wrong or you didn't leave enough space for the entire name, just take a dry erase marker, rub that over, wipe it away and start again. Great hack. I hope you already know that hack. I've been using that hack since the 90s. And I picked mine up from Wish Trend. And what these are is a really fun, it's a two pack. So half of the pack is actually um, a compressed cotton pad and the other half is sponge cotton. So the next thing I like to use is a thumb scraper. So I picked up this thumb scraper off of Amazon and it looks like a razor blade, but it's plastic. This is not going to cut you, but it will scrape that glue off of the back of the pans really well. And then it has replaceable blades. So the, okay. So then the final thing I like to have is a little exacto knife these have replaceable blades i'm going to tell you though the length of this it can break off if that is a lot of stuff for supplies but i'm telling you right now if you take the time to make sure that you have the supplies that you need it's going to go so much better so along with all of this the next last thing that i like to have is i like to put down a piece of paper so i have just a pack of really large black construction paper so i'm going to switch to the overhead and I'm going to show you all of this depotting from above and we'll get into that and you're going to see exactly how I do this in real time. And then if I do um, fast forward any of it, it will be for one of the palettes and I'll show one whole thing timed exactly how long it takes so that you can see how long it takes to depot using this method. And again, we're talking strictly about ABH today and depotting ABH palettes. We're not talking about other brands. If things are made in China, it's a totally different thing. A lot of things are already magnetic and removable. Obviously, that's a different story as well. So let's go ahead and switch to the overhead and I'll be right back. I'm going to start with the Jackie Ina palette. And so what I'm going to do to begin is I think I'm going to do on this first is I'm just going to do a little bit of heat. So we're turning on the heater right here, which you're going to hear. And I'm going to just stand this up against the heater and then we're going to set a timer i'm going to set a timer for let me pull up my watch here and we're going to just do finding the timer watch on my app is always really fun no i don't want a sleep cycle i don't want an alarm i want a stopwatch here we go all right so let's just start the stopwatch and I'm going to give it a couple of minutes and then I'm going to go in from there. So let's pull out the spatula, the Perry and Spirit container, which I already have Perry and Spirit in. You've got actually a little mesh and a ring that comes with Perry and Spirit. I'm going to take the mesh part out and put it to the side because I don't need it 
I'm not cleaning brushes. I just want to use it for a container for the, the Perian. I've got my BK Beauty lipstick in case I need a repressing tool. I know that sounds really funny, but that really does just do a fabulous job at repressing. This is to remove the glue from the back. I've got a clean cotton square. This is the sponge cotton from Dear Clars. This is the one I use to clean everything out and you can see it's disintegrating. These are very, I think, I think these are very biodegradable actually. I'm gonna push that aside. Get out the other X-Acto knife here. And we're gonna put the cleaning products up at the top and the X-Acto knife lids as well. Move the knives to the side and pull out the palette knives so I can see what I feel like. And then we have the Sharpie because we're gonna be able to write on the back of all of these. Magnetic palette knife. Flocking tool. Dry erase marker that I probably won't need, but you know, to have it handy. And then the makeup eraser that I had earlier, I think. That is good. And I'm actually gonna do a second magnetic tool. This is just thinner. This one is thicker, so I'm gonna keep the second one handy, but probably not going to use it. We are currently at two minutes and 17 seconds, and I think it's a great time to start cutting the backing off. I'm just gonna come in here and show you. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Heat off. Now, not all packaging is this sturdy. You can actually break eyeshadows. So if you close the front over the top, then when you're peeling this back off, it can really help. We're just gonna slice. And you can slice through this paper, and then you have less glue to deal with because that paper isn't gonna help or hinder anything, but it can help you remove the backing. So if you wanna cut just the paper, that works really well. Again, that is the point of the X-Acto knife. I'm gonna get up in here so you can see, but I'm just cutting this black paper. I will tell you I use a fresh blade for each palette. So now we have that breaking loose there. We're almost loose here. I'm gonna lay this flat and completely break this apart. Kind of looks like a Wonka bar. Stick this packaging here. Technically, you want to not cut towards yourself. All right, so now you have this plastic tray. All the eyeshadows are intact. Let's go ahead and stop and reset. Heat on, palette up against, and start. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to kind of angle this and focus on depotting the top half and then depotting the bottom half and flipping it. You really want those shades to be hot. So we're gonna give that about two minutes, maybe three minutes. I haven't done an ABH with the hot air method before, so I want to give it extra time and make sure it's really done. I don't wanna break any shades. 
but the shade that I'm going to be trying first is the shade I care the least about, which is Big Wig. I am not a purple eyeshadow girl. So I'm just going to have a sip of coffee and just wait for that. And while we wait, let's go ahead and look at doing some cutting on the Carly Bible, actually. Utilize our time, okay. We've got that going. Same thing here with the paper. And I'm just cutting that paper. That paper backing. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah, that's good. Now I'm getting a little bit of bending. I don't want the bending because I don't want to break this. So this one we're going to heat as well. But I'm going to cut this, this paper on this side. This really nice fine point does get in there and cut that paper. and break that glue loose. We're at two minutes on our other ABH project. Yep, that's great. All right. We are at two minutes and 30 seconds. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do just the least that I can. I just want to see whether this palette is going to give up the eyeshadow easily or whether or not oh well there you go very easy and we're just going to flip that over to cool off upside down you can see that it's just when it's ready it's ready now i've got This isn't hot to the touch in the front, but I think it's actually kind of hottest in this area. So let's get out trust issues or maybe Shookington. Yeah, and I just feel like, do you see how this bent the I just don't feel like, oh, there we go. That little bit of curve really helped that come out. So that one was hot and ready. And do you see also, this is a flat and this one has this like angle to it. ABH doesn't use the same palettes for every formula. Edges is coming out really easy. All right, so then this is the next thing. I'm gonna arrange these on the cardboard in the order that they're coming out. So we're gonna flip over edges and put it there. And if it doesn't come out super easily, then it is not ready. These are coming out just, it's like the easiest little. They come out almost as though they were magnetic. So this is their matte pan and that is their metallic pan. I mean, obviously the tin is magnetic, but they come out almost as though they were never even glued in. Here's credit. Super happy about how these are coming out. Okay, let's stick. Let's just try a palette knife in case you didn't have an X-Acto knife. Although I think you're probably more likely to have X-Acto than this. And I, wow, my palette knife bent. All right. A lot of times I've seen people use a flocking tool. So let me show you the flocking tool as well. And it's all about the shape of the edges. You know, if you don't have, like I see a nice edge over here. If you have a nice edge, you can get right in there and you can just lift that out. If you don't have a 
really nice edge. Yeah, this is coming out really easily. Then it will, it, you know, if the edge isn't as good, this isn't going to work as well. And while these pans are hot, you can actually repress them very easily. I feel like we're cooling down and I really don't want to risk anything. Let's try this really thin. Ah, that's like my favorite shade. Okay, here's another thing to be aware of. See this magnet? It grabbed that shade because of the iron oxide in the shade. So while this is still hot, we're going to take, I don't normally make this mistake at all. In fact, I haven't done this in forever and made a mistake. So BK Beauty, press, gentle lift off. It's completely fixed because that shade is still hot. I am not going to use this again on an ABH. Really, the X-Acto knife works the best. And then this, you can even see the tip, possibly. That tip is even a little bit bent now. So just, I like the X-Acto knife. You can change things out. We're gonna turn the heat back on. I think the heat hit that middle really well. And we're, let's just go ahead and keep this here for, stop, reset, we're gonna do it for about a minute. Again, the BK Beauty lipstick is great. Now, while that is going, I do like to keep all of this cleaned up. So I'm just going to take my flat tool. And this is one of the reasons I like to use paper. Because you can even rub the product in if need be, but just keep it all tidy. We are at 40 seconds. So we're gonna keep this here for a minute. Because these pans are so long, I can hold this and this is not burning my fingers in any way. So now if you wanted to keep the packaging and just do a rearrange in the same packaging, but you would heat these um, face first. At one minute and 20 seconds. And I'm gonna just heat from this direction for a few more seconds. Because I'm gonna press that shade because I really love that shade. I'm gonna press it one more time. You are better pressing with a really great amount of pressure than you are pressing with alcohol or something like that where it changes the texture. Pushing really, really hard, flat surface, even pressure slowly releasing evenly so that I'm not like pushing it in at a weird angle. Yeah, that's great. All right. Now the glue is starting to stick to the, I'm going to let that one cool off completely and we're going to move to sponsored. Ah, my tip broke off. I'm telling you, sometimes you're going to get the tip will break. These are tight. Find your, find your biggest opening. Push back against the packaging. And then you can kind of lift. I just felt it give. And sponsored is another great shade. I don't want to lose it. There we go. So this really gave very easily. It was more of a technique issue than it was the glue. And so just take your time. Don't get arrogant. I've done a lot of these with no breakage and then here I have breakage. And then just be very careful because there's that little sharp in here. And so I'm going to actually dump that sharp. I keep a little glass vase to dump mess into, including little sharps. We don't want to get hurt. Switch this around. Change my angle. There we go. 
Just try a different side. Take your time. There, did you hear that? That was the glue popping off and releasing. Good grief. But I think the shade is intact. I don't think that I'm gonna have to worry about that. I'm just gonna take this again, really center it. Good pressure for one last centering. Turn it over there. And of course this ginger shade that I probably have 12 of is gonna probably pop out really easily because they do. Seems like the shades you care about the most are the ones that you overthink and give you the trouble. Just making sure that we're between the pan and the packaging, not the pan with that green shade. I was between the pan and the product, not the pan and the packaging. Oh, did you see that? This one cracked. And then I'm going to leave this upright right there. And now we're going to do this heat over here. Now, let me reset my, I'm going to reset the timer and I'm going to do three minutes. I want these to really release. I want that glue to let go. And I think I rushed that with doing two minutes and 30 seconds. I really do. And there's no reason to be in a rush. This is my first time using this method. In the past, I have used the flat iron. And the flat iron is hotter. And so the glue is really just destroyed. So if you're gonna use the tabletop heater method, just give it a little bit of extra time. Don't push it because I think that will take care of your issues. We're about one minute and I'm gonna give this two and a half minutes, at least maybe three. Clean my flocking tool while I'm at it. And this is what I was saying earlier where I regret with this flocking tool that the tip is not replaceable. So I will try to find a flocking tool with a replaceable tip down below um, is, and I'll, I'll link it, I should say, in the cards or down below so that you can see that type. Now what you can do if you're having a hard time with glue is you can take this little palette knife and I'm gonna do that on this next one so that you can see. You can take the little palette knife and we're gonna dip this in Parian Spirit and we're gonna get this into the edges. We're at two minutes and two seconds. The one brand I would say I've had horrible, horrible luck depotting is actually Viseart. Uh, they did some palettes that came in BoxyCharm and the glue that they used was very different. It was like this blue-green glue, not this sort of yellow um, kind of a glue. And I don't know what it is about that glue and how much they did, but it didn't work. Okay, we're gonna turn this off. And now we're gonna take this. We're gonna take a little bit of Perry and Spirit. Kind of get that down in there and see if this just makes any little difference. feeling a little shy of breaking any of these again. There we go. That came out really easily actually. And that pan is very hot, that glue is very hot, so I think that two and a half minute reheat was good. Okay, I am not liking that this 
is broken that I've really been experimenting with which tips I like for depotting. These ultra pointy ones break very easily, but yeah, I love the way they fit in. There we go. Soleil is actually one of my favorite shades in this palette. So I'm very glad that we do not have a detriment going on with that. I actually really like Wigglyse also. Oh, there we go. Zam is free. And Wigglyse is last. Very easy. Yep. It was just a matter, I think, of um, I don't think I had this end heated well enough. So learn from my rush and don't make that mistake lean to do the job. So we're going to dip the Parian Spirit and we're going to put this on every one of these to get the glue off. It is crazy effective. Just brush this across like we're going on a little painting spree. Every shade. You can get back in your line. Okay. Now we are going to take, I'm going to go ahead and take a shade. And I'm going to slide this across. Do you see how easy that glue removed with the thumb tool? I have to tell you, when I've been depotting, I've seen people say, oh yeah, use a pink pearl eraser and just erase it off. Use alcohol. I have done all of those things. Nothing is as effective as this. And we have a broken shade. I did try repressing this. I'm going to tell you though, this will be okay. Just as it is. Just like that. So we're going to keep that. Move over. Dust this over. There we go. Get that out of the way. I'm just going to add this to the trash. I'll get a clean one for the next palette. Hopefully we won't have any breakage on the next one. I really did like that brown. So we'll hope that it doesn't completely disintegrate. And you can even dip your tool in the Parian Spirit. wipe that back off. I'm going to use one of these just to get in these little tiny edges. I really want every bit of glue to be off because these are magnetic and I don't have to add a sticker to these. little bit of corner breakage again that's one of those that I rushed should not have rushed that do a little yeah I didn't even need to do that this one was already very happy to release its scummy little sticker Yeah, I've got a little breakage on that one as well. That one goes right here. Yes, oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on. Show day. Let's go. Girl, I see you over there in the corner of the dance floor, and I know, I know you. Acting shy. Looking at the corner of your eyes So I pick my heart up off the floor Move my feet closer to yours Catch my breath and I say I'm the one you're looking for, baby So come on, come on, dance a little dance Take my hand, darling, take a chance You be my queen, I'll be your king Show you everything that you've been missing, shorty So come on, come on, 
dance, a little dance Got me in a trance and just one plan So don't wait no more, oh, I'm me, I'm more oh, I'm the one you're looking for, shorty oh. Girl, I see you over there hesitating Deliberating, you keep me waiting On a sign, looking at the corner of your eyes So I pick my feet up off the floor Move my hips closer to yours Catch my breath and I say I'm the one you're looking for, for So come on, come on Dance a little dance Take my hand, darling, take a chance You be my queen, I'll be your king Show you everything that you've been missing, shorty So come on, come on Dance a little dance Got me in a trance and just one plan So don't wait no more I'm me, I'm more I'm the one you're looking for, shorty I'll be the one you're looking for, shorty So come on the dance floor and baby show me All your moves, all your grooves Shorty, I've got something to prove to you So come on, come on, take a little chance Got me in a trance and just one plan So don't wait no more, I'm me, I'm more I'm the one you're looking for, shorty So come on, come on Trance and just one plan, so don't wait no more. Oh, I'm me, I'm more. Oh, I'm the one you're looking for, shorty. All right, there we have it. I have kept them in the same order. And now all we need to do is label the back, put them in a palette, and then clean up. And I'm going to actually start from scratch with a clean piece of cardboard and everything else. So let's just go ahead and start labeling and putting these into a palette. I just feel like this has the slightest bit of sticky residue on the back still. And so I'm gonna use this. It's gonna take what I already wrote off, but yeah, look at how purple this is from that ink. So it's hard to tell what was really a problem but oh that feels great that feels so much better dry that with the cotton bud and then let's go ahead and try this permanent marker again there we go and so I'm gonna go ginger ABH and I'm gonna just call it J.A. because I know that that's Jackie Ina. And a lot of that I'll be able to tell just by the names even. Yes, oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on, Shade. Let's go. Girl, I see you over there in the corner. The dance floor and I know, I know you're acting shy Looking at the corner of your eyes So I pick my heart up off the floor Move my feet closer to yours Catch my breath and I say I'm the one you're looking for, for So come on, come on, dance a little dance Take my hand, darling, take a chance You be my queen, I'll be your king Show you everything that you've been missing, shorty So come on, come on Dance a little dance, got me in a trance and just one plan So don't wait no more, oh, I'm me, I'm more oh, I'm the one you're looking for, shorty oh. Girl, I see you over there hesitating, deliberating You keep me waiting on a sign, looking at the corner of your eyes So I pick my feet up off the floor, move my hips closer to yours Catch my breath and I say I'm the one you're looking for, for So come on, come on, dance a little dance Take my hand, darling, take a chance You be my queen, I'll be your king Show you everything that you've been missing, shorty So come on, come on, dance a little dance Got me in a trance and just one plan So don't wait no more, I'm me, I'm more I'm the one you're looking for, shorty 
I'll be the one you're looking for, shorty So come on the dance floor and baby show me All your moves, all your grooves Shorty, I got something to prove to you So come on, come on, take a little chance Got me in a trance of just one glance So don't wait no more, I'm me, I'm more I'm the one you're looking for, shorty So come on, come on, come on If you do it this way okay I may not keep these this way but this is the way that they were in the palette and so that's kind of how I like to start and then I'll just decide later if that's how I want to keep them And as you can see in this palette, I can easily fit several more ABH into here. And that is exactly what I am going to do. I'm going to actually be moving my previously depotted soft glam into here. And I'll probably move around some other things. But that's it for this palette. I'm going to go ahead and stop this, clean everything up. I'm going to do the whole thing again on fast forward. All right, let's get back into it and do Carly Bible going to heat this up so that the packaging removes more easily. I'm going to do that for three minutes. We're going to stop here at one minute and 52 seconds. I'm going to actually just time the whole process this time around. And again, we're separating this. We see that paper. And we just want to slice that all the way around. Got a little glue right here. Slicing the paper is the way to go. There we go. Carly Bible packaging removed. All right, let's heat these shadows up now that we can get to them directly. And I'm gonna lean this so that we're kind of leaning it up against. So that that heat's really hitting. And I have the stopwatch going this time to show the entire process start to finish. So we started at about three minutes and 30 seconds and we're gonna go until about uh, six minutes and let that heat really bake. One more minute. Do not rush the heat. All right, so we're working on Carly Bible. We're at five minutes and 30 seconds, and my mic was unplugged. So I'm going to go ahead and just restart the filming with the mic. This is my microfiber for my hands, and we're going to give this 20 more seconds and then go ahead and start. This is from start to finish how long this palette is going to take. This included taking off the cover, which I'll keep, but I'll just eliminate the sound from it. So I don't want my watch to keep getting heated. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the heat here. And we just want to be kind of methodical in our depotting. Oh wow, this glue is so gooey and releasing like a dream. One thing you can do is take a palette magnet and use that to just pull them out and keep them in order. We're going to put them glue side down. And that palette 
magnet is going to help you not lose anything. Find the biggest gap on the palette where the packaging has the best space. I love this hooked tool. It's really small and it um, gets right underneath where the glue is. Just really is unique. Okay, yeah, this one is still fine. We're gonna hold the palette down. And we're gonna pull out Libra. Oh. Try not to hit it. And bump it out. Let's get these. that a little bit too much and we've got that breakage that likes to happen going to press this while it's hot with that BK lipstick and I feel those edges push as hard as I possibly can all right that is a sign that it's time for heat. We're at 941 here. I'm gonna go ahead and give it two minutes and while that works, I'm gonna bring these down.
you can see the Parian Spirit really breaks that glue loose. And so on these ABH palettes, you may want to consider just if you really want every shade to just take the time to put in a little bit of Parian Spirit. Just break that glue bond up. Yeah, this is really nice and loose now, do you see? Because that glue is just completely dissolved. I can pull Aurora out easily. So when I've done this in the past using a flat iron, I haven't needed all of this extra rigmarole, I guess you could say. Um, but on these, we just have a totally different, I don't know if they just used a different glue. It's even a different color. Or if it's the white packaging. Yeah, we're not quite as loose as I want to be. I really don't want to lose any shades. I want to decide I don't want a shade, not have a shade just disintegrate. So we're going to get that glue really good and dissolved. And I'll tell you, I had Parian Spirit when I started depotting ABH, but it didn't occur to me that a brush cleaner could do such a great job on this project. So I've done the heat. I loosened the glue initially. And now these are just very differently tight. And I just don't prefer to lose them. Okay. These two are really tight and I'm going to dissolve the glue with the Parian Spirit, but I'm gonna heat this up too, just because I don't wanna lose these shades. So while that heats up, let's take Parian Spirit and then apply that to the backs of all of these to just make it easier to clean them. the front of the shadows. I'm going to heat the back. And this is what happened to me with Viseart and why Viseart just didn't work for me was that the glue was of a type that Parian Spirit would have dissolved it, but I didn't know that I could use Parian Spirit at the time. So we've been on this palette for 22 minutes. And I can tell you when I did Soft Glam, I literally did the entire palette somewhere. I have the low res video of doing it because I was so new to everything. Um, and I did the entire palette in, I think five minutes or 10 minutes. And then another five to 10 minutes to clean everything up and go from there. So definitely not, these are definitely different. There we go. There, it finally gave good grief. Yeah, and see, that is kind of blue. That blue goo, I think they must have used two kinds of glue on this because the blue glue here is what they use on Viseart, and it is a bear. Oh my goodness, and I missed. All right. Let's go to our little tiny thin depotting tool. You can see also I am shaky, which is why I like to have this. So we've got Jode out and we're gonna flip it. And we're going to, I'm gonna go ahead and put some Perry and Spirit on Jode and my angels.
And now let's get these cleaned up. So I have the eyeshadows in the order that I took them out. And I'm gonna just take them down and start cleaning. Okay, so I am back. I'm finishing this up. Let me, I did pause this, so we're just gonna restart it. This has been a little bit of a longer project. I definitely prefer the flat iron method. I just have to say, I prefer the flat iron method. This has been quite a lot with the glue being really stuck and not totally melted where the flat iron really does deal with that completely. And um, okay, I'm gonna start labeling. We're at 34 minutes. There have been a lot of distractions. That is okay. 